For this week's reflection, I have chosen to focus on an excerpt from Representation, Cultural Representations and Signifying Practices by Stuart Hall. Hall describes how representation is the product of meaning through language and how we use this representation to communicate with others. Our culture determines these specific linguistic meanings which we will share with others and whether they will understand what we are referring to. Hall provides two definitions of representation taking, taken from the shorter Oxford English Dictionary. The first is, to represent something is to describe or depict it, to call it up in the mind by description or portrayal or imagination, to place a likeness of it before us in our mind or in the senses. To illustrate this concept, Hall cites the example of, this picture represents the murder of Abel by Cain. This definition is a more literal one. It is a description rather than a metaphor or a symbolic representation. The second definition is, to represent also means to symbolize, stand for, to be a specimen of, or to substitute for. Hall cites the sentence, in Christianity, the cross represents the suffering and crucifixion of Christ as an example of this form of representation. This definition is a wider concept, which leaves more room for interpretation of a representation. For example, one could view the image of a cross in a variety of different ways. Most Christians would agree with Hall's description. A historian could see the cross as a common method of execution by the Romans. An Islamic terrorist might view the cross as a symbol of Western oppression. This form of representation uses deeper concepts than a simple physical description to analyze what is being represented to the viewer. Hall says that there are two systems of representation involved in the processes of representation and communication. The first is a system by which all sorts of objects, people, and events are correlated with the set of concepts or mental representations which we carry around in our heads. Hall uses the example of language to illustrate this idea. Hall states that an actual physical word itself is not physically associated with the concept it, des it describes. Instead, culture has attached meanings to certain combinations of letters. For example, when we hear the word tree, we think of a tall object with a large brown trunk and green leaves growing from branches at the top. However, a person who speaks only French would not have the same association with the word tree. Instead, they would see a similar picture when faced with the word arbre. But why do these words, which look so different, have the same meaning? Neither word physically looks like a tree. In fact, the word representing the concept of a tree could be anything, any combination of sounds or letters which sound strange to us now, but would be recognizable by the culture that signed it to represent the tree. It is also interesting to note that the people within a particular culture might not have the exact same vision of a tree. The picture I've used to illustrate this is of a dead tree standing in the meadow. But is that really what you saw when you thought of a tree? Depending on where you live and what type of tree you see every day, you might see a maple tree or a pine tree or perhaps a palm tree. Despite their differences, these types of trees are still thought of as trees and they share enough similar characteristics to be named as such. The second system of representation is that we form concepts of rather obscure and abstract things which we can't in any simple way see, feel, or touch. This includes our comprehension of such things as death or love. Both are intangible ideas, and yet we have some knowledge about what each means. This system of representation is also open to fictional characters or places. Representation is visible throughout society. When you see this picture, what does it suggest to you? You probably thought green apple, right? Maybe you recognize it as a Granny Smith apple. In fact, this innocuous little apple is the logo of Apple Corps, a multimedia corporation founded by the Beatles. Music lovers might have recognized this logo immediately. For them, the photo would have suggested images of the Fab Four, or perhaps Abbey Road Studios, where they recorded. Now I'm going to show you an image of the same object, which represents a vastly different symbol. I'm sure you immediately recognize this image as the logo of Apple Incorporated. No doubt you were reminded of Macs, iPods, or iPhones. This image transcends culture in a way, because most, culture, most cultures would recognize this logo and correctly associate it with Apple Inc. With the green Apple logo, on the other hand, many people just associate it with their concept of the fruit. This logo can be associated with deeper ideas than the products that Apple creates. For example, Apple is known for innovation, creativity, and secrecy. Yet Hall characterized those as abstract concepts, which illustrate his ideas about systems of representation.